Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the head coach of the fifth ranked and undefeated Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, Brian Kelly. We were talking a bit earlier, and you and I have talked a lot. Every game at Notre Dame is a big game. So you can't focus on one game and get all fired up for that game. But that said, the Notre Dame-Stanford game is always a big game, maybe a little bit bigger because of the similarities between the two teams on and off the field. And last weekend was a big win. Did you get a carryover this week from that win? Well, I think any time you beat you know, a top 15 team and a team that was the reigning Pac-12 champs, uh, you know, you certainly gain some confidence um, as a football team, especially a team that is so young. Uh, this is a football team that only plays a couple of seniors. Uh, and, you know, any time that you can win a close game, come back and win in the fashion that we did, uh, you're going to get some confidence from that. Um, you still have to prepare the right way. You still have to do the little things right. still have to execute on Saturday. But there's no question that uh, I'm a better teacher after wins. And uh, this is another opportunity for us to teach and, and get our kids ready for Saturday. You win the game on a fourth down call with time running out, and yet, I mean, that play's been watched over and over. It was the image of a team that is executing. There was no panic there, maybe not even urgency. What I saw was a team executing a play that they were confident they could execute. Well, we, we felt like we should have executed a couple plays earlier than that. Mm -hmm. we, we, we wouldn't have to have been in that situation. But I think it started before that. I think even after the touchdown, uh, th there's some things in that stadium that have changed. And, and maybe you don't notice this as much as that I do. But you know, when I first got here uh, at Notre Dame, after that touchdown, the air used to come out of the stadium. Uh, after that touchdown, uh, a, a chant went through the stadium, let's go Irish, let's go Irish. And, and so there's a whole new atmosphere within that stadium uh, that permeates within our entire fan base that we're going to win the football game. You can sense it. And, and, and that tide kind of carried its way through that last drive that there was a belief that we were going to score no matter what the circumstances. And our guys believe that too, that we were going to find a way to score on that last drive. So Irish fans are again earning the right to say we when they talk about Notre Dame because they're having an impact on your team now. Absolutely. And, you know, furthermore, look at our student section. I mean, there are many schools across the country that can't even fill their student sections. And, you know, you look at our student section and every student's there. It is full uh, and it makes it a unique environment in, within our stadium. And you brought this up on your own during your radio show last night. I mean, when you're on the sidelines, you're focused there. You're focused on your job. But you notice not just the energy, but you even looked around. It was a miserable day. We know it was a miserable day. And the vast majority of Notre Dame fans stayed to the very end. And I know that meant a lot to you and your team. Yeah, I mean, you, that, like I said, I mean, you know, that last drive, you know, you've got the fans in it. And, and our players believe that they're going to score uh, if there was nobody there. But certainly uh, to have that kind of energy in the stadium on that last drive, it certainly helps. And, uh, you know, I go back to last year against BYU, uh, coming off a dis disappointing loss against Pittsburgh. You look around the stadium on a snowy, cold day, and there's 81,000 uh, fans there. And that, that's what makes the Notre Dame game day experience unique from any other place in the country. And so, you know, that home field advantage is huge. It'll be huge again tomorrow. North Carolina is going to be a challenge. There's no question about it. They've got a prolific offense. Uh, they run fast. Uh, they've got great athletes. And we're going to need everybody there tomorrow cheering our football team on. People forget they were a preseason top 25 team, and their offensive rankings, many of them, are better than yours. They can score. Oh, they're athletic. Uh, this is a young athletic football team that's getting better. Uh, they played poorly early in the season. They're playing much better. Uh, if they don't turn the ball over early against Virginia Tech, they're right in the football game. So we know what we've got in front of us. Um, a lot of people don't know about North Carolina. We know about North Carolina, and we're going to have to play well. You have recruited for success, and you recruit players who you know will be, be able to help you and help you very quickly. The nation is somewhat surprised at where you are now up in the top five of teams in the country in the coaches' poll. But from your perspective, has this team exceeded your expectations a little bit to this point in the season, or did you kind of expect this kind of play from them? Well, we knew we were going to be a good football team uh, if we, you know, obviously progressed throughout the season. Uh, you know, again, we always want to be better in November than we are in September. 
uh, I think we've gotten to the point where we've made really good progress early on. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, first of all, we've developed our players here. Uh, we utilized our off-season programs. Um, we, we've taken advantage of those opportunities in the summer to really get a lot of our young players uh, the opportunity to learn our systems and plug them in early. And uh, I think our defensive coaches, in particular Coach Van Gorder, has done a great job of utilizing some of our freshmen, not in full-time roles, but in some part-time roles uh, that have allowed them to take just a part of the defense, not the whole defense, and really learn it. And I think that's really helped us early on to accelerate the learning curve for our defense. I think one of the dynamics of coaching football that people don't really realize is you are the head coach of the team, but it's a team of teams during the week. The running backs spend a lot of time with themselves. The offensive linemen, the defensive linemen, there's all these units that then come together to make up the whole, and you need leaders. Now, you have four great captains, but you have throughout the season been mentioning so many people, so many players this year who aren't even captains who have been providing you with great leadership. It is, un is it unusual to have as many people who have stepped up to be leaders as you have so far this year? Well, this is a unique group, and that's why, uh, you know, if, if those who have followed this closely, we didn't elect captains until, I think, right before the season started because we had so many very good leaders, and in particular, our Unity Council, which is a representative group of all of our classes, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. They were really running the day-to-day -day organization and the leadership council of our team, and, and so I was a little bit uh, hesitant to name a particular captain or two. Uh, because we have such great leadership at all ranks, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So uh, we've got them all. And, and so it's a unique blend of young guys and old guys, uh, seniors and freshmen that all have taken a, uh, a particular role in leading. And what is leading when you're a young guy? Uh, it just means you're holding others accountable uh, to the same standards that are set by uh, the, the upperclassmen. And, and that's when you know you've got a pretty good locker room. Everett Golson is now in everybody's top five in the race for the Heisman Trophy. And everybody knows he worked hard when he was away from here, but you made some changes, bringing in Matt LaFleur and whatnot, to help Everett and all of your quarterbacks get even better at their skills. Talk about the support system you now have in place for your quarterbacks that, can, that is contributing to Everett now being considered one of the best players in the country. Well, you know, Everett came with a skill set uh, that was uh, already there. I mean, he had a strong arm, he was athletic, but there was definitely a need for that development. And Matt uh, has a great background in that skill development coming from the NFL, working with Robert Griffin and, and obviously having a background working specifically with the skills, and I think he's really enhanced that with, uh, with Everett. Um, I think the, the next step is Everett's want to be the best he can be through film study and maturity, and, and so you've got two things coming together. You've got a quarterback coach that, that is really good at developing the fundamentals in a quarterback, and then you have a young man that wants to be the best that he can be at his position, and, and, and again, I think experience now is starting to show itself. You know, that really was his first two-minute drive against Stanford, you know. Uh, he's experiencing new things as well. So all of those coming together uh, is making him a better football player. And I think there's a lot more growth out there for Everett uh, on a game-to-game -game basis. Is there any such thing as a trap game, or is that just a media term? You know, our guys just play football. I mean, they're busy enough. Believe me, they're up at 7 a.m. They're over here weight training. Then they go to class uh, until 1.30. Uh, 2 o'clock to, to 5.30 is practice. They eat dinner. They go to study table. They're out at study table at 9. They go back to the dorms. They're in bed, uh, and then they're back at it again. I don't know what they have time to think about, you know. Uh, their schedule is so busy. We have plenty of time to think about all those other things. All they know is what we tell them, and what we tell them is you better prepare, and you better work hard, and so what we can control is how they prepare, and They've prepared well. Now, we got to go play. you got to go play well against North Carolina or you're going to get beat. Whether it's Purdue, North Carolina, Northwestern, it doesn't matter. But they don't have time to think about all those things. Football players play football. Everybody else gets to think about trap games, highs and lows. These guys just play football. Our job is to prepare them. We think we did a good job of preparing them. And you were in the stadium yesterday, and I know one of the things you did practice, did you bring the smoke machines back, but running out of the tunnel when you can't see? No, but we brought gloves for the, uh, the holders. <laughs> uh, we, we've, we, we've brought all the tricks of the trade, 
uh, and, and Jack's referring to the smoke. We're new to smoke here at Notre Dame, and it takes us a while to kind of work out all the kinks. Uh, we put the smoke uh, machine in the tunnel as we come out. The kids like it, but we, we put the nozzles down a little bit too for, close to the ground, and so the smoke uh, we couldn't see coming out of the tunnel. So if you want to see the football follies of all time, take a look at our guys coming out of the tunnel running into the goalpost. It was classic Notre Dame learning how to run out of the tunnel with smoke. Uh, so we're figuring it out. We used about four hours of practice running out of the tunnel <laughs> yesterday. So we'll look good coming out of the tunnel. After that, I can't guarantee you what's going to happen. I know there are folks out here that think we are hyping the game, but North Carolina is an exceedingly talented team on both sides of the ball, and they're very young. And at least to me as a layman, those are the teams that scare you because when you're talented and young, that light bulb can go on. So you do need to play well tomorrow. Give me your keys. Well, for us, it's been, you know, the turnovers. You know, eradicating turnovers on offense is absolutely key and not giving up big plays on defense. If we don't t turn over the football, take care of the football, not give up key turnovers, uh, and then take away the big play, we're going to be fine. Special teams, we've got to be solid in that area as well. Uh, and, and play the game that we're used to playing, uh, we'll win the game. But if we get outside of that, turn the ball over, play sloppy, give up big plays, then, then we're going to be in for the fight of our lives. Always a pleasure, Brian. Thank you for the time. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Irish head coach Brian Kelly, everybody.